Okay, welcome to your flipped lesson 6.6. .6. Today we are going to be comparing fractions using benchmarks. Our essential question is how can you use benchmarks to compare fractions? If we jump down underneath Unlock the Problem, we're taking a look at David made a popcorn snack. He mixed 5 8 gallons of popcorn with 1 half gallon of dried apple rings. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? So we want to figure out which of these two fractions is greater. So our question is asking us, we need to underline what we need to find. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? The clues that we're going to use are 5 eighths a gallon of popcorn and half gallon of dried apple rings. Okay. It does say to use fraction strips. We're going to use our pictures that have been given to us to compare the two fractions. So if we would use fraction strips, or in this case, our picture that has been outlined in our book, we would take one half and compare it to five eighths. So we're only going to shade in half of the top line because it, it, this is one half of the whole, which is two. Okay, so we're going to shade in this side of the number line. Okay, so this represents one half gallon of the dried apple rings. So this top number represents the dried apple rings. Okay, our next fraction is 5 eighths gallon of popcorn. Well, we're going to color in five parts of our whole. As we can see, this is divided into eighths. We're going to color in one, two, three, four, five. We're going to color in five eighths. So we're going to color in five sections of our strip that's been divided into eight. Okay, so go ahead and shade that in. Five eighths. All right. Now, just simply by looking at the picture, which one has more parts shaded? Well, the five eighths has more parts shaded. The one half ends right here, and we still have part of the one eighth showing. So we know that five eighths is greater than one half. So David used more popcorn because that is the larger fraction. So David used more popcorn. Next, write five fractions equivalent to one half. What is the relationship between the numerator and the denominator of fractions equivalent to one half? So we want to find common denominators, or I'm sorry, find fractions equivalent to one half. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So if we start with 1 half, if we decide we're going to multiply the denominator by 4, we're going to multiply the numerator by 4. So 2 times 2 is 4, so 1 times 2 would be 2. So we have 2 fourths. We decide we're going to multiply by 3. 3 6. So we're going to keep going using the relationship between the denominator and the numerator to create our new fraction. So if we would multiply 2 times 4, we would have 8, and this would be 4. So basically, we understand that the numerator is half of the denominator. Okay? So 4 eighths, 5 tenths, and 6 twelfths. So the relationship between the numerator and the denominator, the numerator is half of the denominator. So we're going to state that as our answer. The numerator is half of the denominator. Okay, how many eighths are equivalent to one half? So we can look back up here to our equivalent fractions and we know that four eighths is equivalent to one half. So the answer would be four eighths. Okay. If you've forgotten or if you're wondering and you don't see the relationship with number one, all you're going to do is you're going to take one half and we're going to convert it into eights. So we know our denominator is going to be eight. What do we have to do to the two to get to eight? Well, we have to multiply it by four. So we're going to do the same thing to our numerator. So it's going to be four eights. How can you compare five eights and one half without using a model? We're going to find a common denominator. Okay. So what does 5 eighths and 1 half have in common? So we find our numerator, which is 8 and 2. What are the multiples of 8? 8, 16, 24, 32, etc., etc., etc. Multiples of 2, 2, 4, 
6, 8. I already see a relationship with the multiple of 8. So our denominator is going to be 8. If we look at our first fraction, 5 eighths, 8 times 1. So we're going to do 5 times 1. That fraction is not going to change. Same thing for the next fraction. What do we have to do to 2 to change to 8? We have to multiply by 4. 2 times 4 gives us 8, so we're going to do the same thing to the numerator. So it would be 4 eighths. So we can compare 5 eighths and 1 half by finding a common denominator. Okay? Now we know that since 5 eighths is more than 4 eighths, 5 eighths is greater than 4 eighths, Okay, go ahead and flip to the next page. At the top, it's giving you a keyword highlighted in yellow. A benchmark is a known size or amount that helps you understand a different size or amount. So you can use one half, because we all pretty much understand what one half represents, as a benchmark to help you compare fractions. So for example, use benchmarks to compare fractions. We have another word problem. We're going to read through it and underline what we need to find. The family hiked the same mountain trail. Evie and her father hiked five twelfths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Jill and her mother hiked nine tenths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Who hiked farther? So who hiked farther before lunch is what we need to find. Clues we're going to use are five twelfths and nine tenths. So we're going to compare five twelfths and nine tenths to the benchmark one half and see which of these two fractions is bigger. That's going to tell us who hiked farther, okay? So if we compare 5 twelfths, this has already been broken into 12 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 5 twelfths is represented by shading in 5 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to shade in 5 parts. Five parts. And then I'm going to look up. And I'm going to see where does 5 twelfths fall compared to 1 half. It's slightly less than 1 half. Okay? So 5 twelfths is less than 1 half. Now I'm going to jump over to step 2 and I'm going to take a look at the 9 tenths compared to the 1 half. This has already been broken into tenths for us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to shade in almost my whole entire picture. I'm going to shade in nine sections out of ten. Nine sections out of ten. And then I'm going to look and see where the nine tenths falls on the number line compared to the one half. The nine tenths is actually greater than the one half. So nine tenths is greater than one half. Since five twelfths is less than less than one half and nine tenths is greater than one half, you know that five twelfths is going to be less than nine tenths. So who hiked further? The, the Jill and her mother hiked nine tenths. They actually hiked farther before lunch. So it would be Jill and her mother hiked farther because we know that 9 tenths is greater than 5 twelfths, okay? Explain how you can tell 5 twelfths is less than 1 half without using a model. Again, we can find a common denominator and compare the two fractions, or, like we did previously, we can use the benchmark. So we could take 5 twelfths, which we just did, and determine that 5 twelfths is going to be less, but if we were to find a common denominator, common denominator, we have 5, we have 12 and 2, so 12, our multiples are 12, 24, 36, 48, 2, common multiples are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, I see that they have 12 in common, 5 twelfths, is going to remain the same because all I'm going to do is multiply by 1. 1 half, I have to multiply 2 times 6 to get to 12. So I'm going to multiply the 6 times the 1. So I have 5 twelfths 
compared to 6 twelfths, and I know that one half is going to be bigger, so 6 twelfths is going to be larger, okay? Explain how you can tell 7 tenths is greater than one half without using a model. Exact same steps. We need to find a common denominator in order to compare the two fractions. So we have 10 and we have 2. Multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. Multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. See that they share 10. So 7 tenths. And then we're going to convert this fraction using the common denominator of 10. Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So we multiply 2 times 5 to get 10. So we're going to multiply 1 times 5. We have 7 tenths compared to 5 tenths. We know that 7 tenths is going to be bigger than 5 tenths. So 7 tenths is great bigger than 1 half. It's the same fraction, we just converted it We're using a common denominator. Okay? Using the information that we shared here, you're going to jump over to the share and show. So on number one, you have a picture that you're going to shade using the fractions 2 fifths and 1 eighths. They've already broken it up into parts for you. And then determine, is 2 fifths greater than or less than 1 eighth? Then you're going to compare the following fractions. You're going to need to find a common denominator and then decide which numerator is a larger number. If the numerator is larger, that's going to be the greater number. If the numerator is less, that's going to be the lesser number. Okay?